On this week's episode of Racer Chick, it's opening day at Grace Harbor Raceway. Go, Sammy, go! And tensions are running high between Sam and her dad. Jesus Christ. We need... Over here, please. Sometimes he gets overwhelmed and you're like, God, just chill out. You know what? You got a lot of experience. You use it. In the world of American motorsports, NASCAR is the ultimate achievement. It's the dream of every American race car driver to make it to this track. But those dreams aren't born on this track. They're born on this one. On dirt ovals all across the country, drivers are pushing it to the limit to make it to the big time. This is the story of one of those drivers. Samantha Taylor is Racer Chick. In this male-dominated sport, Samantha Taylor is making a name for herself. At the tender age of 17, she's already got six Grand National Championships to her name. Hi, I'm Samantha Taylor. I'm 17 years old, and I'm from Bonnie Lake, Washington. I'm just like any girl my age, other than the fact that I'm a national champion race car driver. I have trophies from all over the United States. Both of my parents raced motorcycles. My mom raced up until she was <clears throat> like 19, and my dad raced up until he had me. So both of my parents are racing. I'm on the third generation. Both of my grandfathers race. I was looking forward to when she turned 16 and just figured like, you know, 99% of the kids out there that she, I would get to retire from racing because she would quit and I was kind of looking forward to that. And <laughs> that isn't gonna happen, so there we go. I am the only female that races at Grace Harbor. It's always kind of hard for a guy to accept the fact that they got beat by a girl. I go to school with nerds. I mostly race against middle-aged men and some of them are younger, you know, anyway from the age of 18 to 45, 50. And they've been racing pretty much their whole lives, so it's really different from me being a female and young. I do want to race either NASCAR or Indy cars in the future, so, you know, there's many steps before I get there. Hopefully we can take them all and get to the top. I think guys do have their own biases about women in race cars. I mean, I know that there's lots of good old boys out there that don't think women should be in a race car, but that's why I'm here to prove them wrong. This kid is going to be good. She's an excellent driver. She's a safe driver. Roy Larkin makes the move and set to follow him is Samantha Taylor in the 83. Samantha making moves on the low side of the racetrack. 17. She's a race car driver. And up on the cushion, they'll go side by side, wheel to wheel. When, when they put the helmet on and they get in the car, nobody looks at it that way. She is going to be a contender again for the championship. She was a contender last year. She's got good equipment. She's got a good crew. She knows how to handle the car. And she knows how to drive it. <laughs> Opening day at Grace Harbor for me is an exciting day. There's always lots of fans, and you know, it's a point in time where our crew gets back together from the off season. On any given race day, we may have different classes such as sprint cars, modified, cruisers, or hobby stocks. Along with our class, the midgets. It's very exciting to get back to the track and start a new season. Opening day at Grace Harbor Raceway is um, sometimes a little intense because uh, you want to make sure your homework's done. There's a lot of pressure and anticipation built up throughout the year just to get back in a race car. When you get there and you open up that trailer door and you pull the car out for the first time and it hasn't been open for you know six months, it's, it's pretty stressful. 
fired up. Get ready to fire it up. Take this out. Make sure it's still it runs. We're gonna out. put some plugs in it. Check it all out. Whether it's opening day or any day, you want to make sure that every single nut and bolt's tight and that you know the car is 100% ready. And, and it, that's all you do is go over that mentally over and over and over. It's good. 14 pounds of torque. Now you're 12, right? So you only got 12 pounds of torque. Bear, let me tighten that. <laughs> Going all the way forward. Yeah, but you got um, there's brakes. Does it usually go all the way forward? Because I had this thing apart, so if, if I had to bleed the rear end or bleed the brakes, I want to know now. Maybe we should just think we have time now. We're out there as a, as a family again, and, and it's nice because we kind of work as a team. Got it pushed in? Yep. Want me to turn the fuel on in, in the did. cockpit? I did. I, did. Yeah. I, I I asked my dad if he wanted me to turn the fuel on in the cockpit, and he's like, no, I already did that. Can you get to hold your hands over there? Ah, boy, it's been a while since I did this. Battle. Once it fires, you guys can, yeah, with your hands off there, hands when off. your hands are over it, it makes vacuum, and it sucks the fuel through all the dry fuel lines, all right? If you raise your hand off there, you're not doing anything for me. I mean, frustration comes pretty easy at a race crack. You're, you're trying to do your best. Um, things aren't cooperating. Here, I, I, stand back. If you're afraid of it, get out of here. Go ahead. No, we need more gas now. No, I'll do it. You put too much in there, you got a problem. I know. I don't know, my dad can be an asshole, I guess. You're doing it too much. More hands on the throttle. We don't have a charging system on the car, so the battery's going lower and lower. I believe you're giving it too much air. Just sometimes you get overwhelmed and you're like, God, just chill out. You're driving me crazy. Got any more six-year-old ideas? <laughs> he's, he knows what he's doing with the car. There's no doubt about that. Everybody knows that. I mean, you have guys asking him what to do all the time. He wants her to win as bad as she wants to win. What, the way I think about it. Mm -hmm. so. We need over here, please. Yeah, get somebody who knows what they're doing. Jesus Christ, cook breakfast. Most of the time, I'm just like, I can't deal with you anymore. I'm done. And he just yells and screams, and it's like, okay, so we're not talking about this anymore. Doug's just that way, you know, I mean, he nitpicks with everything, you know, <laughs> especially with his kids, which most parents do. You have to have a little bit of air. You have to have a little bit of air. My intensity on a level is probably more intense than, you know, 99 out of 100, more like probably 999 out of 1,000 people. I'm a fairly intense individual. Come on, baby. Battery's going low. Like, I've just grown so accustomed to it. I've done it since I was five years old that I had to shake it off and can brush it off my shoulders. There's some times when I'm just like, I can't handle this anymore, and I have, like, major breakdowns. But other than that, like, most of the time, I can shake it off. This is got the coffee We're good. <laughs> She's the coolest person on earth. Uh, no, I'm her biggest fan, that's what I am. My family and I have always gone racing together. My dad, you know, has always owned my race cars, and my mom's always been supportive of us racing, and me and my brother racing, so it's always been a family affair with us. I'm Chris. 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 
you know, just, and this is our friend, um, uh, Phil. Phil. <laughs> we always have our friends there and, and family, and it's always a, something to look forward to, you know, because it's our social event. And... <laughs> <You're hot. laughs> Sam's been beating me for 10 years, I'm not even going to lie. I mean, they, they've, they've always had their stuff together and she's always been really, really good. Tap with the hammer. I mean, I know as a driver for me and for Sam um, and for a lot of drivers out here that you cannot, be, I definitely know that I cannot be where I am today without my dad and the people behind me, my, my family. You guys want food? You hungry? Grandma's cooking. sure that everything's perfect. <laughs> Going the wrong way. The one thing that I try to do is accept 100% responsibility for all of the equipment and all the decisions that have been made up to that point so that I know that I've done everything right. It's as safe as we can get. What I'd like you to do is take one seatbelt out and put one new one in and one seatbelt out and put one new one in so everything matches. Well, I would say the opening day is always a, a little anticipation of uh, nerves. Did you weld something in there? No, I didn't weld anything in there. Because everybody's a little frustrated or flustered and, you know, how to get everything together before practice or, you know, the actual car goes out on the track. It's done. No more questions. Okay, Sometimes I can get to the track and just tell by her body language or her mood if it's one of those days and if Doug's in one of those moods. Dad, I don't want to hear it. Do you want it all the way down? Do we have. Wait till he's out. We're in one of those moods, are we? Um, yeah, I think he has a little bit of a hangover or something and he went too many late nights. Huh. Not my problem. Nope, not your problem. I'm pretty much the supporter as, as far as emotionally for Samantha, I think, most of the time. I think I'm the, the more loving, softer, um, not so much the tough love parent, you know? Yeah. My mom's kind of a mediator between me and my dad because we both are very hot-tempered and she's pretty calm for the most part. You know what, where's the rack at? It's in there. Let's throw one of those switches. I'll move the rack. Okay. And if it's really bad, I have to pull Doug aside and say, you know, <laughs> you're being a real asshole and you know, you need to knock it off. My wife keeps me in perspective because <laughs> I always have high expectations and they don't always go that way and you just have to realize, hey, it's just a race, you know. It gets old. We have a different relationship compared to most father and daughter. I think most of the time they have a pretty good relationship. At the track, it's, it's testy. Oh, you know what? We didn't turn the fuel on here. No wonder the thing ain't running. I asked you if you wanted me to turn the fuel on right there. Ah. Well, that's why I didn't run them. I thought the fuel on the other fuel. Hmm. See, I'm as rusty as the next guy. Now we can start this car. It'll be easy. And now we can have a hate Doug party. Yeah. Because Daddy goofed up. Oh, yeah. I can get a tattoo that says I'm sorry. <laughs> But I'm not sure that Samantha would be exactly where she was without him being like that. But I drive better when I'm, you know, pissed off, so. He isn't very good with people. Yeah, He's better with animals. And machinery. See, that's my problem. I control a machine at home all the time, program, and it does exactly what I want it to do as fast as I want it to do it, and I only got to tell it once. And then I try <laughs> to relate that to my children, and it's like, I'm trying to program you. <laughs> but I keep getting this error mode. <laughs> Today's not been a good idea. Today's not a good day. No. It's just today, there'll be a tomorrow. God, I hope it's not anything like today. No. Some boy now. Who should I 
who should I do in for you? My dad. <laughs> oh, well, be a good one. That's a dad's fault. <laughs> <laughs> I can do that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Please write down that it's a midget over here. I was pretty much raised at a racetrack. My dad raced and I raced when I was young and the point I stand in line and get my wrist bracelet on till the till we pretty much got the trailer door closed at night. It's all business. Racing isn't about racing for money or racing for the purse most of the time. It's about the passion that people have for racing, the addiction that people have for racing. I mean, that's why we race. Obviously, as a parent, you're always going to have concerns about your children. Oh, and a big time problem for the... You know, whenever I'm strapping Samantha in a race car and tightening up her seatbelts and handing her helmet and her fire suit and her hood, and you know, I'm, I have my concerns. You know, there's always mixed emotions and sometimes you have second thoughts. I feel that every race car driver makes a sacrifice every time they get on the track. Not only are they sacrificing their time, but also like their lives. Anything can happen on a racetrack. And you just try to say a prayer and hope somebody's listening and say it. He's going, yeah, we better get going, I guess. Fuck. Get the fucking... Is it missing? Yes, no, maybe? I can't hear you. Uh-huh. You gotta learn to start this thing. So, when you shut the car off, shut the car off, then shut the fuel off. It sucks. sucks. Yeah, you run the thing lean when you shut it off, and I don't like it. And this isn't the first time. This is the last time this is going to happen. Start it. Bullshit. Fucking... I've taught Samantha to drive, be a very smart driver. She doesn't do very many stupid things in a car. She's pretty well trained, and it pays off. Get out. You know, you need to get out right away because the car's up in the air and so how many RPM did you get doing down at the straightaway? Nothing? No, 61. You know, I'm not afraid of throwing it all at her at one time or throwing it at the team. It just, you know, it, it tells you where you're at, how strong you are. You didn't even go to the wall. So you're making a tighter turn, okay? So you gotta get on your pattern and then don't dive in so early because you're, then you're having to hold it in lower for a longer period of time and that's what's making you loose, all right? I know you only got a couple laps out there, but you have to move the car around and find out where it's going to work and you weren't doing that. Look, we're here for points, okay? I had four laps. How many times can I move the car? How many did everybody else have? Four laps. I know, but you're talking to me like we had 30 laps out there to try something. You know what? You got a lot of experience. Use it.
Actually, should we put that new one on for qualifying, I guess? New wheel. New tire. Good idea. Go get a new track record. Five, he beat us? What's up? I don't know, it felt good. You see your times? I know. Well, that ain't good. On opening day at Elma this year, we qualified very poorly. I put some new spark plugs in the car. When I was at the auto parts store, I couldn't remember the exact number, so I went for the hotter heat range of the plugs. That was a mistake. The car felt good. <laughs> the lap times weren't good, Samantha. But I wasn't getting the feedback from Samantha whether the, whether the issue was chassis or handling of the car or flat motor. Well, how bad did she tie him in? That was terrible. Competition is a very funny thing. It brings out the best and the worst in people. All right, I love you. Go get her done. Fire it up. Sometimes I even turn up the heat a little more than I'd like to, or things come out of my mouth a little harsher than I'd want to. You know, hard love is something that not everybody has, and not everybody welcomes. Figure it out, Samantha. Figure it out, girl. As a father, you, you don't want anything to happen to your, to your children. As a coach, you want to get the absolute most out of them. You want them to grow. You want to push them and push them and push them because eventually somebody else is going to be coaching her. And if she doesn't learn to be coachable, that, that will be a detriment to her future. I can only tell you about this turn down here because I couldn't, from the angle I could see, here's the inside of the corner. Racing is like a thing that you get addicted right? to. It's always yeah. been in my blood to race. Here's the outside of the corner. It's something that I love to do and I wouldn't give it up for anything. No other sport can take this away from me, you know. Getting in a car and going over 100 miles an hour every single time you get in it, that's more exciting and ambitious than anything else that I think anybody could do. My heart pounds out of my chest sometimes and it's uncontrolled, and once in a while your knees are shaking. I mean, there's some adrenaline involved in that. I am very proud of her. Sometimes when she gets off track, I step up and remind her like a coach would. There ain't no way, not, not one of these guys can outdrive drive you, all right? So pick your game up, that's all you gotta do. And sometimes you have to give her a hug when she gets out of the car and she's a little discouraged like a father. I think the opening night was just a bad chain of events from the beginning, we forgot to turn the fuel on in the beginning, and. You know, it just went on from there, and we had a car that wasn't running, and I also was really gamed up to come back the next weekend and just dominate the entire night. So it was a motivation almost, but also very frustrating for us to go through. You don't get discouraged, and you never go home with your tail between your legs, and you get stronger and stronger and stronger.